Hello everyone, welcome to our daily mana. Well, among you here joining our daily mana today, you have been labeled with names according to the things that you do. You know what, in our life today, there are labels that have been placed to us by other people that we don't like. Sometimes when we are outside or we are among with our friends, we are called other names, things that they identify as with. But you see, Oftentimes, when we put attention to this label, there are times that how we live our life is actually based on that because it has been a mindset for us already. But you see, there are labels in our life that we do not like. And this label or the things that they name to us should not be in control or our identity should not be based on this. If you have your Bibles with you, kindly open with me in the book of John Chapter 8, verses 1 to 11. The word of the Lord says, But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives early in the morning. He came again into the temple, and all the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery. And having set her in the center of the court, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. What then do you say? They were saying this, testing him, so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus took down and with his finger wrote on the ground. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone. And the woman where she was, in the center of the court, straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go from now on, sin no more. May the good Lord bless the reading of this word. Now, if there's one thing that I actually imagine while reading this, is the shame that has been brought to the life of that woman when she was actually brought in front of Jesus Christ. When she was caught red-handed doing that adulterous act with some men, you know, maybe that experience for her was very shameful. And you see, oftentimes, <clears throat> because of that act, people would put and try to label her as an adul adulterous woman, as a woman who committed a grave mistake, a grave sin. And you see, back then, during their time, doing that or being caught red-handed because of doing an adulterous act is something very deep for them, very grave for them, to the fact that they have to stone someone who has been caught red-handed doing it and stone her to death. This was the experience of this woman. But what I like about this experience is that all the while, while Jesus was standing there and these people asked questions and trying to trap him, Jesus was very quick to respond. And his answer, while they were actually trying to, you know, to label this woman, they were trying to trap Jesus with all of these questions, Jesus was just asking them, Who among you who has no sin cast the first stone towards this woman? And when it comes to ourselves, there's, there are three things that I realize. The first thing that I realize is that the first one, our identity is not based on what people think of us. You see, oftentimes in our lives, there are expectations that we see from other people. There are things that other people would say at us, that, you know, they would put label at us on the things that we do, on the things that we have, just because they want to mention things, or they want to put label on us, or tag on us. But you see, our identity is not based on what other people think about us. And just like that woman, I think the greatest act that Jesus did there as he did not even call this woman an adulterous woman. He actually approached this woman with so much grace and did not count her sin, but allowed her to realize that after that, that experience, she can sin no more. And the second thing that I want us to remember is that our identity is not based on what we can or cannot do. You see, it's not about our education, it's not about our attainment, it's not about our achievements or the things that we have or the things that we possess in life. Our identity is based on what God has called us to be, on what God has actually placed in us 
through the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ. With all of this being said, there is one thing that I want to emphasize for all of you listening right now. Our identity is based on who God is and what He has done for us. In the world of business and marketing, there are three persons who can actually label and put tag on us. The maker, the buyer, and the owner. The maker is the one who actually makes the product. The owner is the one who owns it. And lastly, the buyer is the one who purchases it and buys all of those goods with a price. In our Christian identity, all of these things, these three things that I have mentioned, these things can be found in God. He is the maker, He is the owner, and He is the buyer. He was the one who made everything. He made you and me according to His image, according to His likeness. And He is the one who owns us. Since He was the one who created us, everything that we see around here, He owns us. But you see, it was not just a simple ownership to the point that when we were lost in sin, He gave His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, and He bought us with a price. That is why He is also a buyer. He bought you and me with a price, and that price is the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. So my brothers and sisters in Christ, I may not know what labels or tags you have in your life or what other things people would put on you or label you with names and identities. But if there's one thing that I want you to understand and realize is that God is the only one whose voice matters for you and for me. And God's word stands true that He loves you, He created you, and you are created with a purpose. Allow me to pray for you. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for granting us this wonderful time. I pray, Lord, for my brothers and sisters that you will continually bless them and allow them to know your goodness and your graciousness. Lord, all the more, especially at this moment, Lord, in our life, I pray that all the more you will remind us of our identity in you. In times, Lord, where we are at loss in this world, remind us, Father God, that we can always come back to you, that we should be deeply rooted in you because you are the only person who has the right to put an identity in us because you have bought us with a price, with the life and sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The Lord bless you.